take his lemon from him. But um, the first thing that you want to do, oh yeah, we learned a lot, and I hope you guys uh, will learn a lot too. So uh, take a look at uh, the information that we have for you when we went shopping, and uh, it was really a lot of fun. Thank you again. Hi, we're here to do uh, a marinated crab, and it's uh, we're going to marinate a cold crab today. Pasta that I've cooked uh, like a spaghetti about two-thirds of the way, and he's sitting underneath here. Hi. Welcome to Cooking for All Seasons. My name is Judy Keys, and here we are at Poppy's in Morgan Hill. And I'm here with Anthony Davi. And we're shopping today because we're going to be doing crab because this is crab season. And uh, we came to this beautiful fish and uh, fish restaurant. Actually, it's just not a fish market he actually has poppy this is poppy right here and he has not only fish but he does all kinds of uh wonderful uh lunches and dinners and all kinds of special things um so why don't you guys uh give us a little bit of an idea of uh what's going on here poppy we are an old style fish and butcher market our our key success here is there is nothing that's ever farmed in our fish cases Everything is wild and natural. My family's been doing this since 1895, and when I decided to reopen a market in honor of my late father, Poppy, we wanted to pick a place that was very similar to Walnut Creek in the 1960s where we grew up. Um, in the meantime, I met Anthony, who's a gentleman who fished with my family for years also. Yeah, and he's a friend of my friend, Renee, and um, so we got together, and so he introduced me to you, and so now we're here, and we came to get some crabs. But you guys have some um, other interesting information about some fish, and we were talking about the other day, and I think that the, uh, the audience would really be interested. In, uh, and Anthony, um, not only did you fish with his father, but you've done a lot of fishing all, all over. Right, exactly, all over the coast. Alaska in Bristol Bay, uh -huh. um, down to herring in San Francisco, uh, salmon uh, coastwide here along the Pacific Coast, also uh, for kings. So, um, and, you. and um, the, and Poppy, you also were a fisherman at a very young age. We started. I started commercial fishing with my family at 15 years old, up and down the coast, like Anthony did up through Alaska. Um, yeah. And we just continued the tradition. We still have family that owns boats up in Gig Harbor, Washington. And we've talked before about why we specifically carry the wild fish okay. as opposed to the farmed. And okay. it, it's everybody's individual choice, whatever they want. Okay, but there's some there's some interesting um, things about the difference between. I mean, yeah, there's a price difference, obviously, but there's a real there's a real body. A health difference between well, the biggest reasons we sell wild here is number one with farmed fish it takes three pounds of bait fish such as anchovies sardines mackerels three pounds of that fresh wild product to create one pound of pellets that they feed the farmed fish farm fish also have a higher tendency to carry parasites in them uh -huh. because of the the way they're trapped uh, one of the largest problems I have is the colorations. They actually have to inject a food dye into the salmon when they're harvested because they're not eating wild product, they're not eating a pure protein, and the meat is not as red, it's not as rich in a lot of the nutrients that uh, wild salmon is. And I think as well as, as long as, as commercial fishermen here are talking, as long as you fish conservatively, commercially, I think we can continue. Uh -huh. I think that to me, farm just isn't as good of a product for your body. Our choice is to eat the way my fathers and our grandfathers ate, yeah. and that's just a wild, natural product. Well, we're here, and this is all good and fresh. Well, I should say not farmed, because it's all, even when you go into the markets, it's, it's fresh. However, they do now, that's the one thing, they do have to state that it is farmed. No. Right. They don't? No, what they do, and there's, there's something that your viewers probably need to be aware of. You don't have, you can't lie, but you don't have to be totally forthcoming. If you look at a lot of ads at different places, uh. it will say fresh Atlantic salmon, which is true. 
It's fresh. And, and it is the land. on the Atlantic coast. Oh. They cannot say wild. They do not have to specify. Oh, I form. see. I see. So if you're going into any other stores, or even mine, I mean, always ask, is it a wild natural product? Because they have to tell you the oh, truth. Okay. But it's, it's, it's one thing. You, you've got to really look at what you're buying nowadays. Well, hey, there's a tip. You heard it here from the fishermen. <laughs> You know, so let's see, what are we going to, okay, today's show, um, I know, I, the one thing I see is I see a lot of people when they're going into markets, even the fish markets, they don't know how to deal with the crabs, so uh, we're going to have, we're going to try to show you how to clean a crab, and then we're going to show you a couple different ways how to cook a crab, not to cook them, because they're all going to be cooked, uh, actually how to uh, serve them. Uh, yes. There are certain places, I don't know, uh, when uh, the crabs are uh, available and they're, and they're alive, do you... you, do you Absolutely, my we tank have, is filled with we live have live. Yes. Well, we would have live Dungeness crabs, but at this time, they're all, they're all pre-cooked. Um, on the website, I'll give you a, uh, instructions how to cook a live crab, and they're really good cooked at home. Um, there are some other recipes that you can use where you just, and, and I know I don't want to gross anybody out, but you technically cook the, you just rip the crab apart when he's alive. I know nobody gets sick here. And you actually just put them in, into whatever you're cooking. And one of those would be, actually would be chipino, uh, is what the uh, fishermen in San Francisco would do, uh, would just put the live, uh, crack the live crab up and just throw them in. But don't worry about it right now, okay? <laughs> We aren't going to do it on the show, okay? But that's what they did. So um, with that, uh, let's see what we got. Okay, guys? And, yeah, you, can, you, why don't you just hold that? Yeah. So, oh. A couple of these. Oh. Okay. So the, these, are, these have already been cooked. And um, what, what I want you to do, can you, can you kind of, uh, obviously, these are the legs, <laughs> obviously, and these are the pinchers, okay? Uh, when they're live, you, you don't want to get anywhere near these things because they, they do hurt, uh, believe me. Um, so technically, you would grab them, oops, you would actually grab them, I believe, from behind. Right, you grab them. The easiest way is to take your thumb and put your thumb here and then your palm here because they cannot they can't get to you when they're alive. Yeah. So you always want to keep your thumb a little lower and the palm of your hand down there, and the claws can never get to you. Yeah. Trust me, I learned the hard way. And uh, <laughs> we all have uh, been through that. Yes. Anthony, yes, that. had my thumbs and had them dangling okay. before. Um, this is the skirt, I believe, and uh, when you open it, and we'll, I'll show you more when we actually crack one at home and everything, but. Um, this is what they're going to look like uh, when you buy them in the in the at poppies. And I know now, Poppy, do you crack and clean them? Absolutely. He, he will we, crack and clean them. We will them. crack and clean them. We don't. But but I want you to learn how to, I want you to learn how to do that because it's it's good to learn. Also, uh, there's underneath here uh, there's some crab butter that you may or may not be interested in. That's very, it's very good. But, uh, so we're going to use some crabs. And let's see, what else are we going to use? Oh, we're going to use some shrimp. So um, there's some shrimp down here. You got that. And then we're going to use, there's a couple, there's some jumbo prawns. Okay, now this is like a big question. What is the difference between a shrimp and a prawn? Honestly, if you ask Honestly, me, I don't think there is. Is honestly, there? Honestly, there is. It's the, size, I, size. Size. I really. Yes, prawns are, and, prawns are typically. Right. And there's, there's different kinds. There are different kinds. And that would be this. this. Yeah, this is considered a six count, which means there's five to six in a pound. Yeah, so when you see that, that U, it's a U, and it says even, and that goes for all shrimp, crab, I mean, shrimp, prawns, whatever they call it on the bag, and it says like 31-40, uh, U31-40. That's the count. That means there's 31 to 40 per pound. 
That's right. the count. But there's a difference in the waters that the, the shrimps come from. Right. There's fresh water, there's salt water, uh, they come from Mexico, Chile, Argentina, they come from all over the world. So there's tiger, white, all different kinds. So these are... These are actually, this is a 1620 count prawn. This is a salt water out of the Mexico Gulf. Oh, those are really good. Okay. These are the five counts. These are actually a freshwater prawn. Ooh. Okay, which is harvested. And they're wonderful for the grill, not really good for sauteing. And the reason being? They're so big that when you try to saute them, they'll, they'll actually, the meat will get a little soggy. Oh, when you grill see? them, they're phenomenal. But when you grill them, the nice thing about the large ones Look. is these are known as an easy peel because we've already split the shell open so you can peel it apart easily. Isn't that cool? And the sand vein's been taken out. Not only that, when, when they're like this, they're really easy to marinate too. You can like throw them in marinade. One, you have to be really careful, careful though when you're marinating uh, raw uh, shrimp or really any kind of seafood and you use lemon or any kind of citrus, uh, technically you're beginning to cook it. So you don't want to leave it in the uh, marinade uh, for a real long time because technically you're going to end up with ceviche, <laughs> which is, uh, which is a uh, Hispanic uh, or Mediterranean or whatever you want to call it a sort of uh, dish. It's good, but you will end up basically beginning to cook it. It won't hurt it, but that's what you'll do. Right. But those, those are really good. Um, so we're going to use some of those, and we're going to use some clams, and we're going um, to get some squid, and we're going to do some different kinds of things. And Anthony's uh, wife, Renee, and uh, Joelle are going to be over there, and we're going to crack some crab and we're going to marinate it. Um, uh, one is a Croatian uh, sort of, I don't know, recipe. It's actually an Italian sort of recipe. So it's sort of uh, all mixed together. Then we're going to do another one where we're going to take some crab and some pasta and some seafood. And we're going to make this beautiful uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, this is my creation. <laughs> It'll be good. It has lots of garlic in it. And I just, I really, you guys, uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, here we are. This is Cooking for All Seasons, and we're doing the crab show. And we're going to show you a little bit about the crab. We went shopping at Poppy's, and uh, we went with Anthony, and Poppy uh, and Anthony told us a lot about crab. And we have uh, Joelle here and Renee here. We're going to do a lot of different things. We have three main things that we're going to do with crab. We're going to serve a cold crab. And these guys, it's just a plain cold crab. That's going to be one dish. And then these guys have a wonderful uh, dish that they're going to be concocting up and mixing in the blender. And that's going to be a marinated crab. It's a cold crab, but it's got a real neat marinade to go, that you like put on top of it. And then I have another crab dish uh, that is going to be crab and some uh, shrimp and some clams. And it's going to go in this beautiful, wonderful dish from La Crusade. Uh, that's my other sponsor. And there's such a wonderful uh, group of people there that have uh, been sponsoring me for the last uh, shows. And this is in a beautiful wok and it's going to be going in the oven. That's going to be the other one. Um, i just like to also thank... And I'd like to make sure that you guys get a picture. This is uh, this reserve. It's a reserve. It's called Reserve Bar, and it's in uh, Morgan Hill. And they have they specialize in all different kinds of wines from all over, not necessarily just current, just our wines local, but wines from all over. This Reserve Bar, they have a lot of really neat things. And they serve like hors d'oeuvres. They serve some light salads and different things. It's kind of, it's really it's really beautiful. Not only that, but it used to be a um, a bank. So their vault is full of wine, and they have this door they open. And it's the it's the door to the bank. You know the bank vault, and it's so cool looking. So I like you guys all to go in and and take a look down there. They're they're very nice uh, down there. So they're sponsoring our wine today. So. Today, what I really want to show you is, and a lot of people go shopping and they buy crabs. This is crab seasons are always the R months. People don't understand really why it's an R month, and really, it's 
it's because that's when the cold water comes in and that's really really the why you know, our months if you kind of figure out it's like october not so much but november december november starts our crab season here in uh in california um every year it might be a little bit different but it's about the second week in november it starts in uh, san francisco it'll start in this area uh, first the uh the uh, local fishermen get to go and then after that the, i think it's the day after so the uh the uh, we call it the actual the commercial. the commercial fishermen get to to start their crabbing but um i love crab i know you guys do too i mean it's just i mean i i if you're if, if i was born and raised with it so i mean if you if you're used to eating it, you know, you just can't wait for this time of year. And, and uh, so you're going to, you're talking about November, December, which are the best months, November, December, January. You know, as the year, as the months go on, it just sort of begins to dwindle. But it's all along our coastline, you know, our coastline up to Eureka. And then, up, you know, obviously go, comes from Seattle and then, you know, into Alaska. It's always coming out of Alaska because their waters are really cold and everything. So let, let me just, just. Real fast here, I'll take all this stuff apart. Now you can see we decorated him, you know, a little bit here. This is just fresh Italian parsley, and we're all going to be using that in a little while and I'll take his lemon from him. But um, the first thing that you want to do is, and I, I learned this, this is a male crab. Um, you cannot, evidently they can't catch the female crabs. Uh, too small. Too, too small. Mm -hmm. And they're breed they're the mm -hmm. and they're the they're breeders. The Otherwise would have more crabs. So the first thing you probably want to do is um, you you wash them off when you get them from the from the uh, grocery store or at this uh, I get this, you know, this is from Poppy's and he he brings in really good crabs and he cooked this these are freshly cooked and let me tell you something, my cat went just absolutely nuts. I've never seen her so crazy, but she was just she was She's really beyond, I'd say, hysterical when she could smell these. Mm -hmm. But you can tell the difference between a really fresh crab and you can't. Because you, can, you, you smell it, but it just smells so clean. So the first thing you want to do, well, when you're buying him, you know, so I took off all of his legs. He, he should really have all of his legs attached. You know, you don't really want to buy a crab that doesn't have all of his legs attached to him. I just took off. He should have his, his big guy. And then, and then these four right here. So when you're buying a crab, just kind of make sure that all the legs are attached and, uh, and that the, the body itself is not cracked. Okay, so you, you, you just kind of want to make sure that he's not been all smushed up and everything. So then just take, it's, it's easy, really. I, you know, a lot of people don't want to do this. Yeah, you just give them a little tug. And yeah, they, they, they come off, pop pretty, off easy. pretty easy. And, and if you've got them from a they're clean they're very clean you know rinse them rinse them if you're if you're a little bit squeamish okay so then that's done i mean i know you guys are wondering how can you do that so i everybody does this differently you know um i just just this comes off very easily you don't have to be looking at it just kind of open it up and all you do is pull on a shell Okay. And it, just pops right off. and it just comes right off. Okay. It's very easy. Now, a lot of people use the tamale inside. And everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Do you? I mean. I don't. I don't. I don't like the flavor. It's, texture. it's very, it's very pungent, but it's, it's very good. So a lot of times, uh, a lot of, especially a lot of Asian a lot of uh, uh, foods are made with it. When they do stir fry, they'll use the tamale inside the butter. It's actually the butter, not the tamale, but it's actually the butter. They call it uh, the butter, and um, they'll they'll stir fry it with uh, garlic and uh, and fermented uh, beans, black beans, and they make a sauce for it. It's it's really good. Everybody's kind of looking at me like, oh. But it, it really is. It's very pungent, yeah. and a lot of Italians use it. And you know, it just kind of depends on mm -hmm. what you like. Also, you could clean this out and use it to 
as a as a, a serving. I've seen app seen appetizers served in it in it like a you know an artichoke. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, dip. you can. So you just I mean if you want to just go ahead clean it out. It, it's not going to hurt you. It's dead. There's nothing in here that's going to poison you as long as you buy fresh you know fresh crabs you know that have been kept really cold and you use them you buy them and you use them don't you don't want to keep them in your refrigerator for a week and and then decide to use them you can't you can't do that you no. buy them either use them that day or use them the next day you can't you got to keep them in the refrigerator really cold Okay, this is the part everybody's going to go, ooh. These are just, they aren't anything. They're just his breathing gills, and they aren't going to hurt you. Just pull them off. Now, yes, normally I would be doing this under a light running water. Now, everybody does it differently. <laughs> Joelle is looking at me like, <laughs> because some people don't, absolutely don't want any part of this. Now, I, it just depends on the way you... I, I, I know I like mine not real waterlogged, so I have a tendency to use just a very little bit of water, just enough to clean them off. Um, and you're going to find some more crab butter in here. Don't just, mm -hmm. there, you know, yeah. just, just rinse it off. Don't, if it bothers you, just don't look at it. Just stick it under the water. And then this is, and just break off. There, and that's it. There's his body. Okay? It's very easy. And that's it. Actually, just run this under some cool water, mm -hmm. cold water, not warm water, cold, cold. water. And then break just break it in half. Yeah. Okay? Now, normally, if I was going to run this underwater, you wouldn't be seeing all this, but it won't hurt you. Okay, this is not, this is just the, the crab butter that you see. And then if you want to, this is, you know, everybody likes different parts. This is the body. And I'm just going to break this guy in half, and you're going to see all the beautiful crab meat, see? Now, that, that was easy. So some people like the crab body. They do. Some and some people, people like this the big guy's leg and some people like to work for the little stuff to work for the little guy okay this has a different taste than this does than this does they they have different flavors they just do they, they you know this has a tendency i think to be a little sweeter yes don't you think mm -hmm. I, 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 like I do that. i like and, that see some people mm -hmm. are leg. some people are mm -hmm. leg people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some people only want this is a little this is a little i think this is a little um more um is it tartar or? well it just doesn't it has a little different consistency to it you wow. know it's a little mealier it has it might have a little bit more of a mealier flavor it breaks out a little bit differently and then some people just they just got to have the body they just got to have the body so depending on which and this is a little easier because it is a little bit less uh, there's more, more reward less work yeah less work more, more reward so that would be it, you know, try it, get one and try it. It's not going to hurt you. Just run it underwater. If you can't look at it, just do it while you're running underwater. There's nothing in this crab that's going to hurt you or that you're going to get sick if you eat it. Um, you know, the crab butter is not going to hurt you or anything. I know some people don't want to look at it, but it's not going to hurt you. Mm. So anyway, okay. So there's your lesson on how to clean the crab and then to crack them. All you're going to do is take your cracker, okay? And kind of just, you know, various just joints go and through. spots. Yeah, yeah, so that his meat is a little exposed in each. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, I've shown you this. We're going to cut for a moment. We'll be right back. And these guys are going to show you how to do their marinade. We'll be right back. Hi, we're here to do uh, a marinated crab, and it's uh, we're going to marinate a cold crab today, and uh, it's really pretty simple. There aren't very many ingredients. Uh, we're here uh, juicing some lemons, which is going to be uh, most of the foundation, along with olive oil, um, parsley, and garlic, uh, just a dash of vinegar. We're going to talk about that and how much y you can use, and uh, some garlic. Did I mention that already? Garlic, because we're here from Gilroy. So, um, 
the beginning is to just uh, juice some lemons. I started, uh, I had about 10 pounds of unclean crab and I did about one cup of um, lemon juice for those. And it turns out to be about a one to one almost to the olive oil, but the olive oil is really to taste. So uh, we're gonna marinate a couple crabs today. So I'm gonna start out with about a half a cup of lemon juice. So how did your family, now I know, so you, you two have about, about the same kind of recipe. I mean, right. very similar. Right. Mm -hmm. right. They're both basically Italian. Right. One's Sicilian mm -hmm. and one is... Well, we learned it from Italian. Right. So, from so, Italian. And I'm not so. sure what part of Italy okay. they were so from. So now, you, look, give, you give us, Joelle, give us a little story about how, how hers came about and then... Well, we were looking to an alternative for uh, our our pre-Christmas or Christmas Eve meal and looking for something very easy that was easy to prepare. And so when we were talking about doing crab, a family friend uh, showed us this recipe. And so we take our, our best daily newspaper and lay it out on the table and put a pot of marinated crab in the middle and Everybody gets a small fork, or you can make your own with the end of the crab claw, and uh, and a knife for uh, bread, and uh, it's have at it. It's uh, and I've experienced it. <laughs> I, I've been a party to it, and it's very good. So and then so you're okay. So now you guys are doing the lemon juice. Uh -huh. The lemon juice. Uh -huh. Okay. Now so now your now where's your your now where's yours from? Well, I'm Sicilian, so our recipe is from Sicily in Italy. And I have a very big Sicilian family, and we always do a seafood feast on Christmas Eve. So what we've always done is we've always had the marinated crab. We start with the crab, and then we have shrimp cocktails. And then we go into the chipino and the fried oysters and the fried calamari and sand dab. So it's actually just a huge feast. But we always start off with the marinated crab. And my grandfather did it, and his father before him, and my mother does it now, with my husband Anthony. And it's basically the same recipe as Joelle's. It's just the lemon juice, the olive oil, the flat Italian parsley, garlic and salt and pepper, and a splash of vinegar. Being that we're Sicilian, we like really spicy, zesty food, so I think we probably use a little bit more vinegar than Joelle does. But you could just taste as you go along and just add it according yeah. to your taste and how you like it. The biggest difference in our kind of recipes that we, we discovered was just the amount of vinegar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And really, even the amount of olive oil mm -hmm. and the lemons is to taste also. Mm -hmm. So you could technically, so, you know, the only difference would be like you could put like the red wine vinegar like on the table. So if oh, you sure. wanted more mm -hmm. vinegar or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what we've done is juiced about a half a cup of lemon juice right here. And we're going to pop this in. And you can use whatever, you know, a blender or a... Um, Food processor. Food processor. Just We've kind of found that. that, um, that so do you actually put the... the this in uh, the blender? How do you blender? do it? No, we just... When you toss it, this is for mm -hmm. afterwards? Yeah, we okay. kind of just, oh, okay. you know, kind of finely, relatively okay. finely chop it. And okay. uh, then we add that at the end. Okay. Um, our process is that my dad and I used to do is just to do the... the because the olive oil lemon juice ratio is kind of the one of the more important things because you we do it in a blender so it emulsifies and Ooh. and it stays to, and you, you create an emulsion so it mm -hmm. stays together mm -hmm. if you were just to put this in a bowl and mix it together it's going to separate mm -hmm. and you're going to get you know very more distinct lemon and, and olive taste so, so it's, it's almost like, creamy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. so what we do is um as i said put it in a in a, either in a blender or a food processor put the lemon juice first, and we're just gonna turn this on and drizzle in uh, some olive oil uh, just until it gets, you know, sort of to the right balance. And it's just blending, tasting, blending, tasting. Uh, the last time I did this, it came out to be a pretty close kind of a one, -to -one, one to one ratio. Do you put the garlic in there too? After, yeah, we'll do that. Once this is done, oh. then I add everything else. You kind of mix that up. And we'll put, you know, the crab, crack crab, in a big container. Yeah, I've got one. For You've you. got one right here, and uh, this looks almost like what we use. We use mm -hmm. a, um, a cake, 
whole cake thing. So these are, these are good. Which I need to go get some of these. Yeah, these, 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 are, are, these are good because they even, really seal real good. They're nice even better big. because yeah. what we do is once we you know get everything together, our crab goes in here and this goes in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whoever walks by the refrigerator during the day it. just kind yeah. of flips it over a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And so... Okay. Um, yeah. Marinades pretty yeah. much all day. So. And we always marinate our, make our marinade in the morning, the morning that we're going to eat it. And we marinate our crab. And then we eat it that afternoon. We don't do it the day before because then it marinates too long. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's okay. important that it's done in the morning and then you eat it that day. And then you do yours overnight. You do no. yours overnight? No, not overnight. Oh, all. you do no. yours the yeah. same In the morning, same too? Yeah. yeah, we start in the morning yeah. depending on how long it takes us to do, depending on how many crab yeah. we're having, and which is typically a lot of the, yeah. the Crab to person ratio is very high, uh, but we typically do ours in the morning mm -hmm. and uh, marinades all afternoon. And like I said, we just flip mm -hmm. it around every few hours and delicious. And then we eat. Mm -hmm. That's right. So right now we're just going to put this on puree and uh, drizzle some olive oil in, and then we're going to start uh, tasting. And okay. So that's what we're going to do. So. And the salt and pepper comes later, right? Yeah, so? I typically do that a little. <laughs> It's almost like a light yellow. And you can different color. Yeah. give this a little taste. And the key is to, to start tasting so that you, depending on how many lemons you have, because if you, if you do, if you juice all your lemons and you know you can't rebalance, to, to drizzle and taste is important because you don't want a real heavy, heavy oil. Well, know, yeah, and I say, I can, I can imagine it has something to do with the, 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 the pungency of a, of a lemon. You know, mm -hmm. has something to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know? and that's really. why you can't necessarily say it's this much lemon juice and that much oil because depending on the type of the lemons and well, you um, taste it. See, so you, you guys taste it. Too. Let, me, let me taste it. What are you tasting? What, so you're just just so that it's a nice balance between you know the lemon and the oil. I taste it's, more. Do you taste more lemon? Or, yeah. But I taste the oil too. Yeah, you taste I taste it. both. You, you yeah, you, and you want to taste. I do you taste want to both. taste both. I and do. It's, and it's going to be again to your personal preference, just like the vinegar is that um, when which we'll add in, in a little bit and talk to. But you just want a nice balance, and it might have to do with how much pungency of the lemon juice yeah. that you want. Well, if certain really, lemons. These are these are mm -hmm. nice little lemons, and and, and if you like more lemon punch then you're probably yeah. not going to put as much olive oil. If you just want, you know, just uh, the flavor of the lemon, you're going to end up with a, a little bit of oil. Um, but it's, it's, you just want to strike a nice balance, but you don't want it too, too heavy with, with the olive oil. I definitely tasted the lemon. And then you so, taste the olive oil. Yeah, so I would say that this is too pungent yet. So we would too up, much mm -hmm. lemon. A little so, bit too much more. lemon. Oh, okay. So I would say let's add some. Yeah, because it's not yeah. quite. It's not quite half a half either. Mm -hmm. More lemony. More lemony. Yeah, more lemony. Yeah, because I mean I can tell just by that looking at it? by looking at it that it's not quite half to half yet. Because I'm kind of puckering a little bit. Yeah, and. Depending on what kind of olive oil, you know, yeah, how, sure, the how, flavor, the flavor you're gonna get, sure, oh, you know, sure. Depending what you know, what brand and how pure. Well, sure, because you know, there's different different olive oils have different uh, flavors. Uh, Spanish olive oil is uh, much more green. It has a tendency to be greener. 
-hmm. and it's it's much more pungent. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, Italian is, is a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, French olive oil is has a tendency to be a lighter uh, flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. it really does depend on which, which on which one you uh, mm -hmm. you're using, and you know, so it just I mean I think it just kind of depends on on what you what you like. Don't worry about so it. I'm spilling all over. Don't here. worry about it. And the different presses with the olive oil too, like yeah. virgin, extra virgin, they're really strong. I think we're getting close, but I think still a little bit. Okay, well you, bit you do it to what you you okay. do because. <laughs> Good job. Very nice. I'm going to go through JD Spoons by the time I'm done. See, I think it's getting pretty close. I think it's. I'm going to give it one more punch and I'm going to have you guys taste. No, you taste it. I, I'll go by your mouth. You, you know I'm going to give you a taste here. When I you, 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 okay. you guys do it. I, I'm, I'm the bite. I'm the, You're the bystander. I'm the bystander mm. chef today. So it's quite a one. bit more oil than lemon so far. It ended, yeah. It ended up it being that well, way. I think because it has something to do with the lemon. The lemon's, lemon's being very strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely a lot yeah. lighter than the last time. Yeah. Just so you can't really there. taste the lemon as much. You taste more of the olive oil, I would say. Yeah, I like that. And then by the time you put there. salt and garlic in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so we're, we're good on, on that. And now the, the biggest difference, again, between just sort of historically how my family has kind of done this and um, Renee's family is the amount of, of vinegar. And uh, we just put pretty much kind of a dash, a half a cap full to a cap full. Oh, whoa. And um, we'll use between half a cup, two thirds to three quarters of a cup of vinegar. Whoa. We like our food spicy. Shit. I know, we do. Well, then we're so just going to put different. that on the, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, but we'll, we'll, we'll go just with put that, rest. yeah, put, put that on, on the table. table. Because mm -hmm. to me, that would be like um, somebody using, um, like, um, I'm like thinking, salt on the no, I'm here, I'm just going to, okay, I'm leaning back, tabasco, I'm leaning there you back, go. would be somebody, yeah. the difference between somebody using like a Tabasco, right, right? Mm -hmm. they like it really hot, you know, if somebody likes something like mm -hmm. with more vinegar, okay, yeah. mm -hmm. my daughter would be going, where's, like, the, where's the vinegar, okay. because she's a heavy vinegar person, right, so, you know, it kind of just depends on your taste, mm -hmm. and you're you know? going to want to really use a really good, Vinegar, mm -hmm. red wine vinegar, and I and I got mm -hmm. a good one. For yeah, you. Mm -hmm. so 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 let's uh, let's put a half cap in. Okay, you want to? Yeah, we'll put you a little we'll kind of put because it, it might in. as you get as. Now you're going to throw the garlic in there? Yeah, we're going to, um, yes, we are. And so this, again, you know, how much depends well, how yeah, much that's, you, that's, if you love garlic, mm -hmm. you can put more garlic. And there's nothing more fun than, as you're eating this in the in the big pot, to take some, some uh, French, French bread, bread. Oh, yeah. and to go diving <laughs> yeah. and we got good, all, and we got all kinds of bread the tonight. morsels of crab that have escaped their, their uh, shell and to, to die for the garlic. So... Um, I've been using really one huge, huge uh, clove of garlic per crab plus oh. one extra. So oh, that's that's a good way of doing it. So the and I got so a bulb it. or a clove? A clove. Or, just or a, a bulb. Yeah, a bulb. Just, the no, big no. A clove. A clove. Wow. So, but okay. How I'm sure that. You, oh, we how use much? bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> we would use a bulb you per. You would be Sicilian. I would be Sicilian. But I think yeah. you know. I think probably more <laughs> is probably better. I yeah. It's like I said. I've been you know. It's. Well, I, and, and then there, there's another thing is garlic, you know, and we live in Gilroy, garlic, you know, has different 
flavors. It does. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. sometimes you get, you know, Fresh. you can get some good mm -hmm. strong ones. You can get some mm -hmm. ones mild. that are a little mild. Mm -hmm. You know, so, it, I mean, I think, you know, and if yeah, you look at some of those in there. This I mean, would be th one large one. That, this would be, this yeah. is kind of like a baby one. So Yeah, you so, know, you know, I mean, I this so, garlic I bought, it was already peeled and everything because we were using a lot of garlic today. So if you looked at the difference mm -hmm. in your in a recipe and it said use two garlic cloves and you looked at these two different garlic cloves, it would definitely have to be by by what your taste mm -hmm. what your taste is. Mm -hmm. And and I I would have to say that you, know, you want to hold up some of these. Yeah. So you know I mean if you look at so some of these sizes. sizes you know, yeah. based on what your your taste is, and really what you're making, mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. don't want a lot of garlic flavor in mm -hmm. there, then mm -hmm. you have to kind of be a little choosy about which about which. I would not, to me, mm -mm. in in a pot of something, this would not even would not even blink its eye. So I would not even consider that. Um, this I would consider a clove of garlic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you, you're not gonna. In the big scheme of things, mm -hmm. you're not going to ever even. No, th no. that would this disappear. Is, this is sort of like a four to one ratio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to really yeah. taste yeah. it. No. But people who are very shy of garlic are going to be very careful about it, yeah. you know. So. So I think this handful looks like a pretty well, there, good. Well, that. Okay. Like so a, we're going to punch this start. up. We're going to, I think, put it in here because okay. we're going to add our garlic and not, you know, not crater it up. Um, in in here, and then we're gonna. Am I gonna chop it first? Am I gonna chop? Are you gonna chop it, or we can just uh, press it? Do, or we can just are to put it in there? I thought you were gonna put it in there too. We no? could we and just puree and it just a little puree bit. Well, yeah. puree in there. Yeah. I mean, I know it will, but do you normally well, that, do that? I think we normally chop it. But oh, you can okay. you know, but that's the whole thing. You can. There's no. Well, do a, a, okay. There is a difference to the way you. Let's chop it then. Okay. Let's keep to garlic, the basics. It, it, garlic chop. does change you know its do? strength in the we way you yeah. cut it. We chop it. If you were to puree it in there, it will be much stronger. Yes. If you were Oils. to chop it, it will be less pungent. If you were to slice it, it will be less pungent. So garlic is. Because what you're doing is you are cutting the molecules of the garlic clove. So it d would make a difference. So I would think if you were going to put it in there and puree it, I would definitely cut the amount of garlic down because it's going to be stronger in there. Right. And, and this is kind of just a little, a little idea. When people put onions in Cousinarts and... And 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 in uh, these in um, what do you call it? Food okay. processor, food processor, burger. anything. And they and they can't understand why it's so much more, why it's much stronger is because technically you're breaking it down further. So you know it is going to be stronger because you're you're pulverizing the thing. You know, so it's going to be, it is going to be stronger. So by chopping it like this, you are definitely not going to have, it's not going to be as strong. So I would suggest that if you're going to put it in there, you might want to take your time and do a couple of cloves at a time mm -hmm. to taste it. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do it like this, you're, you're, you're going to be a little bit safer about it. And like I said, if you're into dunking bread at all, this is the way to go. Yeah. Because you're going yeah, to get, get some You're going to get some pieces, and mm -hmm. you're going to get, yeah. you know, like I said, some morsels of crab escape their mm. shell, and there's some really tasty things at the bottom of that. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to hit this one more time just before we put it in okay. here. Okay. And, um, <laughs> and I'm going to put this in there. Mm -hmm. And so okay. Anybody want to give this one last taste, or we can? I trust you. It's good. It's good. Mm. And okay. so the consistency is kind of right. uh, far more creamy. Um, what's this? There's some spatula. Oh. Fabulous. Uh, because we did this in 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 here, like I said, the consistency. And those are by La Creuse, and I love them. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to put this in oh, here. Is that too well? much is this, parsley? Uh, probably a little bit, yeah. How, you tell me yeah, when. Like, is that? Yeah. All that garlic, too, correct? Yep. All of that? Oh, yeah. Let's all do of the it. Whole we might even add more, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'll use this. Okay. Don't worry about that. Okay. okay. And so. Uh, can you guys see that? It looks really pretty. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's how ours looks, Joelle. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you look pretty close. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We add a little salt. Do you add salt? Yeah, just a touch. Salt, just a little? Mm -hmm. Just not a little much. bit, not much. Yeah, because you really have to be really careful, careful because you're not really sure if the crab it's itself, you know, uh, right? I mean, the right. crab lives in salt water, mm -hmm. so technically, and he's been cooked in salt water. So, you know, you're never quite sure. Probably the best thing to do is test your crab. Mm -hmm. Take a little mm -hmm. taste of them you can before, dip a piece in there and yeah, and that. see and see what you're what mm -hmm. you're dealing with before. So do we you... have a little sea salt and a little pepper? Do you put pepper in yours? We do put a little mm -hmm. fresh yeah, pepper. Yeah, so we do. Sometimes Let's white see. pepper. I believe we or use white have... pepper. Do you... Oh, you got here it. would be pepper. That's pepper, pepper. That's fine. You know what? I'm doing it because every time somebody uses this pepper melt, we have a pepper shower. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not just saying that. I have witnessed. So tell me when. Um, okay. okay. I think so. And you guys got the, uh, I have like, I have numerous kinds of sea salt over there. I have gray salt, but I have uh, regular kosher salt. Kosher like, salt's fine. Should I, I walk over? Salt. Can I go over? Oh, here would be the kosher salt. Okay, okay, yeah. Ooh. You want to just add a dash? Just a that? dash, just a mm -hmm. pinch. Yeah. That's a big pinch. We'll put half of that. I'm okay. heavy with salt. I have a heavy gun. Okay. okay. So we're ready uh, for the crab. Okay, so them very you guys happy. go ahead and... So let's move this up here. Is that okay? Yeah. And then we'll just grab this, Joelle. Okay. I'm going to scoop this right over here. That's okay. Got it? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. do we have some crab to pour this over? Right behind you. Yeah. So I'm going to... How much yeah, of this... Yeah, just take, just take how much, the bowl. Just, um, how much of this is going in? Because as part of this deal, yeah. something else? Just, like, yeah. Just put at least... Two of these, there, right? Know. I'd put two, at so least... So that's a couple big of body. Big old claws. I'd put at least half of that guy in there. Yeah, yeah I think so. Nice bodies. Bodies. Oh, smells good. There's it smells six. nice and fresh. Uh -huh. mm. Are the bodies good with what else, what else you're doing? Oh, yeah. Okay. Nice bodies. Another body? Big, big claw. Another okay. body. Okay. okay. Yeah, take some more. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Right. That's good. Okay. Okay. So this is it. You just get a big container that you can that will seal when you're done because you're going to flip this a couple times, but just mix this up a little bit and pour it on top. Now normally we would like leave this all day long mm -hmm. in the refrigerator, mm -hmm. and we are going to put it in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. But um, for today, we're just going to eat it right away because <laughs> we can't wait. <sighs> Sorry, but it is. It's it's a little better to you know marinate it for a little longer, but you don't want it. You know, like Renee said, marinate it overnight. Too, over it gets too pungent. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got anytime you've got lemon juice. And it looks so pretty though. Mm -hmm. Can you guys see? It really does look pretty. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mm -hmm. it look pretty? It's orange and green. It's beautiful. Fall colors. Mm -hmm. mm. So we're going to seal this up and then we're going to flip it around before we uh, put it in the, in the... Actually, you know something? I think we should put a few... Let's, let's put a few more in there. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, I, I think this one's Here, we'll give you the... No, I think, I think we'll just put some more in here. This isn't... Yeah. Because <laughs> that looks just like way like too crab. good. Going to be yummy. Yeah, because this, this is just looking. Okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. okay. Let's jam this in. Okay. Judy, I'm just having you, a feeling that uh, you help you. Judy, yeah. people. I've never used it. Is that there? Yeah. I don't want to have crab all over the no. counter, which there you go. I have on that week. There you go. Perfect. That's a great idea. Just to toss it. We oh, stir yeah. it, but this is really oh, no. this is much better. And so the rule in my house is, while this is marinating, every, you know, whoever goes by the refrigerator every hour or two, just this is their work. exercise. <laughs> this is what they do. <laughs> and it just gets everything kind of mixed up and coated a little better. And uh, It's nice and clean. Yeah. It doesn't make a mess. It's no. all sealed. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. We had and one these, that leaked a little bit. It, and these are, these are made for food. And so, you know, mm -hmm. they're... I have to mm -hmm. go get some of these. I don't, so anyway, okay, we got that one done, and the next one we're going to go on to is the uh, the crab, the shrimp, and the clams in my beautiful La Crusade. And I think 
I think we're going to open a bottle of wine from the, the reserve, reserve wine bar. So we can stand here <laughs> and have a little wine while we're doing that, and we'll be right back. <laughs> okay, so we have a little bit of wine. That's probably why we're giggling. Behind to your health. So Joelle's going to, um, this is some wine from... Uh, the Reserve oh, from Wine the reserve. Bar and Merchants out of um, Morgan Hill, and uh, this is Jezebel. It's the second uh, label out of um, the Dallas Cellars in Oregon, and mm -hmm. it's a nice blended wine. So uh, the Reserve carries a lot of different wines in addition nice. to some local mm -hmm. stuff, and um, they've been <laughs> gracious, enough, gracious enough today to sponsor us and to provide, provide us with some really nice wines. Yeah, it's really good. I like the food. Mm -hmm. Taste it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna taste some more too while you're talking about. Oh, okay. The fish. And okay, so this is this is um, the the lap. The other the other crab one uh, that we're gonna do is just plain crab. It's just because my husband just likes it plain sometimes. So then I just made some uh, some just some sauce, regular Louis sauce for that. And uh, that that recipe and, and all these recipes are gonna be on the website. Mm. So That's you good. know. Yeah. Make sure. This this one underneath here is pasta that I've cooked uh, like a spaghetti about two thirds of the way. And he's sitting underneath here. And uh, I, I hope you can see this is absolutely beautiful. Um, Poppy's uh, sent us all this beautiful uh, shellfish. You know, he's in Morgan Hill and, and he's a really a nice, nice uh, man. And if you tell him what you want to do, I'm, he'll help you. He has all kinds of really good seafood. He has. Uh, beef and pork and really interesting things, you uh -huh. know. He really does. I, I was really surprised and um, about some of the things he has. He has this like uh, this Berkshire pork, uh, which I want. I really want to try. It was. Mm. I, I looked at it. I th I couldn't believe it. Almost. I looked at it. I thought to myself, Is that pork? It wow. looks like beef. It's it's beautiful. So that's another show. But we're gonna try that one too. Okay, in here I have, um, as you can see, I have see the little crabby guys. He's, they're reaching out, and uh, this is already cooked. The crab is already cooked, but um, these clams are not. And um, if you tap on them, this guy is going to close his mouth for you. There mm -hmm. he goes. He closed his mouth for you. Mm -hmm. um, they keep opening and closing their mouths. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know. They were trying to tell me, "Don't eat me! Don't eat me!" You know, they're trying to stake it that they're that they're dead. And obviously, if a them. clam is like out of his mouth all the way open, uh, the shell is all the way open, or if you cook them and you steam them and they're and they don't open, then don't pry it open and don't eat it because it's not going to be good. It's going to be very bad for you. Uh, also in here, um, you have to pick up one of those and show. Them. <laughs> I, I have to show you Big. these these there's shrimp like are these are there's easy. One oh, color. here's one guy. Look at these. Colossal. I mean, come on now. Huge. These are what you call they're easy peels because they're already been they've already been deveined and they're they're real and obviously you can tell they're easy peel because their their shells have already been cut for you. They're the size of like I I would say just about the size of a lobster of a small lobster mm -hmm. tail, uh, mm -hmm. langostinos. But these are what they call um, I believe these are uh, four sixes U four sixes. In other words, they're four to six per pound. And, and when you go and you buy shrimp, uh, that's that's how you tell. And you can see how beautiful they are. So I'm just gonna tuck him in here. And this is a beautiful walk now. Um, what I decided was I, I wanted to do something kind of spectacular so that you could see everything. And I decided that people always think that the only way to use a wok is to use a wok on your stove. But I decided that La Crusade has this beautiful wok and I wanted to do something different. So I decided to do this mm -hmm. with it so that it, what we're going to do is I've made this, um, it's butter, olive oil. It has some Pernod in it, which is a French, this is sort of a look, uh, a licorice tasting mm, uh, sort, of, sort of anisette, sort of be very careful mm. with it. It is very strong. And I'm telling you, I used about a cube of butter and about a half a cup to a cup of olive oil in this. I used two capfuls of wow. this in wow. here, and you can taste it. It wow. is very pungent, wow. very, very pungent. I used about, I don't want to tell you about 
20 cloves of garlic, and I'm talking about the big guys here. I used, um, I used uh, dry vermouth instead. You can use white wine. That's fine. I used, uh, obviously, olive oil. I used a couple of bottles of just clam juice, and I used a squeeze of a lemon. We used a little squish of some, um, what it was that? Oh, anchovy, anchovy. paste. Mm. Thank you. Mm. I'm like, ding, anchovy paste. Squeezes of some... Um, black pepper, a pinch of salt. Once again, be really careful with your salt because you've got seafood mm -hmm. in here. But you have pasta, so you're gonna have to, you know, you're gonna have to judge it a little bit. Uh, and some fresh uh, flat leaf parsley. So then what we're gonna do is uh, on some uh, pepper flakes because I, I like, I think it needs a little bit of pepper flakes in there. Hot pepper flakes. That's another thing, you know, do it, do it to your taste. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pour this over the hair. Wow. And then, can you hear? Oh my goodness, that you was a plan. I think he was like going, oh, I get to eat, but he doesn't realize it. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah. he shut, oh, he oh. oh. just like. Oh, he just They're talking closed, to us. He just closed his little oh, mouth funny. going, hmm. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. So then we're going to just put the top on this. Mush the top. We're going to mush mm. the top on there. Mm -hmm. And it's actually going to, we're going to put it in the oven. Uh, it'll be in my oven, which is a convection oven. I put it on full convection at about 350, which will be like 375 because in convection ovens, about 25 mm -hmm. degrees different. Mm -hmm. For about 15 to 20 minutes, it depends. All you really want to do is get those shrimp and the clams to open. That's all you want to do because remember your crab is already cooked and the pasta is about two thirds of the way cooked and all it's going to do is absorb 15 minutes in the juice and it's going to finish up absorbing the rest of the liquid. So we're, so we're going to pop this in the oven and we'll be right back to you guys. We're going to finish our wine and then we're going to set the table and uh, have the rest of uh, Anthony will be here. My husband will be here. We'll tie our bibs on and uh, we'll see you at the table. <laughs> eat it now. Okay, we're ready to eat. We've got our wine, we've mm -hmm. got our forks. Mm -hmm. Anthony's here with us. Mm -hmm. Renee's husband, Clem, my husband, Joelle's here. Okay, we're all ready. We've got an antipasta here. We've got our plain crab with some Louis dressing. We've got, this is the, the uh, pasta with, get your fork out of there, come we got the pasta underneath with our shellfish that we put in the oven. We've got our marinated crab over here. You always got to have some little dessert, so we've got some um, brownies over here, a little chocolate at the end of the night. And this is just some red pasta with some um, pancetta that I uh, browned over the top. Naturally, you've got your French bread. Here's our wine from the Reserve Bar in Morgan Hill. We want to thank Poppy's in Morgan Hill. We want to thank La Crusade. We want to thank all of our families. We want to thank all of our friends. We've got all of our friends waiting for us out here, waiting to munch down all of this wonderful food. We want to thank the crew and all of our friends that help us, and they're all waiting. No so thank you all, welcome to your house. And thank you all for being with us. Remember, our website, all the recipes will be there. And good health and happiness uh, to all of you. And try the crab, try cleaning it. I know you can do it. All right, see you later. Okay, get your forks out. Okay. Okay, was that okay. fast enough?